Yo, what's going on guys? I'm gonna be showing you how to hyper carry on Zach's support. If you're auto filled or if you're a support main, you should definitely think about playing and learning Zach's support. It scales really well. I will be honest, his level one's objectively terrible for the most part, but once you are level three, level four, or once you have mobies, you can start to take over the game big time. The main thing that holds Zach back early on is his level one's just super long cooldowns and if it's a hard to land skill shot. You don't want to start E too long of a cooldown. You want to start Q much shorter cooldown and still very solid CC for your runes. This is what you're going to want to take aftershock demolish bone plenty on flinching with triumphant and coup de grace. I would say don't pick Zach if the enemy team has stuff like Syndra, something that can instantly knock you out of the air. Zach is very reliant on landing his E's. So Syndra is just, really bad for that kind of thing level one then me team they have two ranged and I'm melee so we're gonna have to chill for a bit and just get a feel for what our Draven wants to do if your AD carry doesn't want to fight then you can't force fights so right now things are pretty neutral okay I can't throw out Q though I kind of have to hold on to it I just throw it out raw once it's on cooldown then it gives them a lot more pressure most of the time level one on Zach. It's better best not use an ability so they don't know what you started and also it forces them to uh, not be too aggressive. Wave's still very neutral. Velkaz is throwing his abilities at kind of random. We're level two now, we can play aggro, play up on them. Get on top of the vein, cue the Velkaz, knock them together. Pick up my blobs, and as you can see, if you do land your spells, insane amount of damage. Oh wow, what is this? Draven's going a little ham and cheese over here. You also get your blob blitz, so you, if you do land your spells, you get so much healing off of your passive blobs that you tend to win the trades pretty easily. Ooh, there we go. I Q'd him, knocked him against minion, then I eat him. Your Q does have a lot of range. It has slightly more range than it shows on the indicator, like the tip of it, it's slightly farther than that. Trust me, I've played a lot of Zack Jungle. <laughs> I'm very familiar with uh, his indicators and how far they actually go. I'm going to Q Vayne here. Knocker, I don't have my E. I should have actually waited like half a second. And this is why you take Demolish. Demolish lets you get a plate super early. Alright, Vayne's dead. I should have probably tanked that for the Drave. I didn't think he's going to go that ham. That's partly on me. Uh, just bad communication. He didn't really ping it and uh, so I guess that's just solo queue for you. We did get a plate and a half there. That's really cool. We got some bonus gold. Now we can get our boots and build into our Knight's Vow. Ideally, you want to get Mobies on your first back. Gives you a lot of power, but since we didn't have enough for Mobies, we just got our normal boots. We got a Ruby Crystal and a Control Ward. The Ruby Crystal is for our Knight's Vow. Vow is one of your most important items. It's super inexpensive, and it gives you a lot of value. Armor for dives, HP for dives, cooldown reduction helps you out a lot. Especially if you have an AD carry. If you have a mage laner, then Knight's Vow is kind of shit. But if you have a strong AD carry, then uh, Knight's Vow gives a lot of value. I ran neutral, thinking I might roam mid. Galio is having to back off, so now I can run bot. I'm going to get to my bot lane roughly 8 seconds later than normal. Not too bad considering I built a lot of potential pressure. I'm gonna E over the wall here. If they push up too far, it's really easy to land. I'm gonna flash, knock him in the vein together. Oh, baby, it's a kill. I'm gonna get them low for the Draven to hit. Zack is really dangerous in two situations. If your teammates have them under turret and you're roaming, you can dive pretty free if your aftershock's up. Or if they're shoving on top of your turret, you can go over any wall. So if they're mid, you go over the walls. If they're top, you go over the walls. And you get a lot of value. We're going to go ahead and try to shove this in. We want to try to dump the wave. Once you have two points in your E's, normally when you start roaming, Mobies or two points in E's when you become a lot better at it. When you only have one point in E, it doesn't go quite far enough to gain mid efficiently. Once you have two points, however, that's when things get spicy. It's knocked up. I'm going to hit him with Q, drag him back to the minion, knock him, 
and he's dead. It's the easiest to land your Q if you knock them up first. Once you hit them with E and then midair, that's normally when you Q something like a minion and then melee them, or you'll Q the champion and then melee them against something like a minion, a ward, a dragon, a plant, anything that you can melee. Or another champion, of course. I don't really want to tank this. My Draven's coming back to lane and I don't want to leave because the enemies are shoving it in. If the enemies had it frozen, that would be a different story. Velkaz is coming up. Got a third point in my E. I want Velkaz to come up a little bit farther. Gonna Q him against the plant. I'd still have my passive up. He used his ignite. We can even reset here. I'm gonna leave my pink in this bush. That way I can set up my E's a little easier. I won't have to do it from the bush. I can do it from the wall. That is level six. Knock up Vayne. Ooh, we're gonna use that too. Very cool. This game is going swimmingly. Now we want to reset and get our Mobies. Top lane, Renekton is a little too low for us to roam on right now. It's not worth it. So we're not gonna go top. Whenever you do hit the base, you want to see where you're gonna go. And we're gonna get a Kindling Gem, and we'll buy an Oracle Lens. If you're gonna be roaming around, you want Oracle Lens to make sure you're not stepping on wards, making sure you're not wasting your own time. Draven's still bot side. I can run mid or neutral. If Zed comes back, he's pretty far behind. We can punish that. And Zed's up. Gonna use Oracle Lens. I just checked three bushes in just a few seconds. E, Q him, knock him against the minion, and he's dead. As you can see, the tether range after you land your Q, even though Zed was a mile away, the tether range is much longer than the Q's range itself. Now I can hover mid like this. I can't fight them 1v2 down here, so I can wait to see if Sejuani shows up mid or potentially roam top, but I want to stay to where I can go to either as many, basically giving myself more options to more lanes I can impact. Once you have the third point in your E, your rolls become even better on Zac. The range is increased so you can reach from more bushes, more sides, over better angles over walls. Like I said, the pink ward helps out a lot. It lets you be able to stand here, gives you a little extra range. Otherwise, you have to stand in bush because a lot of times they'll ward over this wall, especially when they're shoved up. If they do go missing though, you should get back in the bush because they might run over and lay a ward. And if you're standing over here, the ward will be able to see you for a few seconds before your pink ward neutralizes it. So Juani, no full jungle item. Still more items in Hecarim. Vayne isn't quite stepped up yet. She's scared. I'm going to hover mid. They're very scared of my Draven. And, ooh, this bush is warded. wonder if that was Zed or if that was uh, Vel'Koz. Because Vel'Koz has been missing for a bit. Zed's playing far back. He's scared. I didn't think that gank was going to work. Is that just playing so safe? They're very low. We can dive them under turret now. I'm going to take the plant and come from the back end of this. Knock Vayne up. Igniter. Oh, Draven took a turret shot for that. He got the kill. That was really awkward. I didn't think we were going to dive him like that. My E was on cooldown from killing the Vayne. I'm going to go use my... Uh, Demolish is, like I said, Demolish is really important. If you guys want to see the exact runes, level order, items, go to the start of the video and you'll see it all there. Yeah, I want to get my Demolish off. Get some plate gold. Bam! Just like that. Got the minions. Try to get this plate. I'm gonna E away. Unless she has flash, she can't get me, also have my passive. Wait, that bush is warded? I ulted her away like an alley headbutt. Yeah, she flashed too. She's she's dead. Knock her up. <laughs> I still have passive. They probably don't even know it. Oh, I missed my Q by ooh, just a little bit. Your ultimate knocks him away pretty far. To where right as she got close enough, I ulted her. It's like a half an Alistar headbutt. 
Ooh, he knocked me out of the air with that. Well played. I don't think he was even trying to hit me with that. I think he was just trying to hit the Draven. I think Vayne warded this. Oh, no, it's just Velkos. This is dangerous. I have to leave. Velkos might just... Oh, that was a good prediction from Draven. There's a high chance Velkos was going to toss a Q into the bush. Now that we have our Knight's Vow, your next item is going to be Spirit Vistage, Dead Man's. Or uh, Gargoyle Stone Plate. In this particular game, I'm leaning more towards Stone Plate. They have a lot of true damage, and since Gargoyle gives you a lot of HP on active, it helped me out a lot against their Double Ignites, and the Vein true damage, and the Velkos true damage. Stone Plate's a really good neutral item to buy on melee supports right now. Super strong, cost effective, high value. So we were just keep chilling. If there wasn't, it looks like Zed's pushing up. We could move towards that. Check Dragon real quick since Draven's not here. Yes, yeah, Sejuani's in it. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to make it hit her. She just dumped over the pit. I have to leave now. The bot lane's rotating. And check again. Yep. And I'm going to get in the bush. That way, if he wards over the wall, uh, he won't be able to see me. And then the pink ward can neutralize it. Heck, I'm starting it. That's very dangerous. Yes, I, I figured it was warded. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone knew that was warded. I guess Hecarim did, wasn't, he might not have been paying attention. I have my ultimate up. Can't really force a fight there. I just got I'm just gonna keep hovering. If they, if they uh, commit to bot, then I'll go bot, but I have to be patient. Zed doesn't have tier 2 boots. He should be easy to land E on. Once they have tier 2 boots, landing your E becomes a lot more difficult. It's much easier for them to walk out of it. Vayne's by herself. I'm going to go tag that. Good chance Velkaz is there in a second. We got to hurry. Good chance this is warded as well. Just gonna be under turret, just waiting. Oh, yeah, Velkaz walked right into me there, chunked me down super low. Knock him against the ward, knock him up. R, he's dead. Whenever someone is about to lay a ward in the bush, hit him with the Q and then you'll smack him against the ward. They'll regret ever using their ward. People do that all the time. Right as you're running away, the ward the bush, and then whoop -ah! Smack him against it. We need to get our Vow on Draven. We haven't put it on him yet. There we go. This is warded. Zed's missing. I do have passive. As long as I kite Zed out. And get him to a safe spot where I can respawn off my blobs. Basically just near Draven. He has full item plus BF sword. He's super scary. Q Velkos. Knock him against Vayne. Ignite the Vayne. Ooh, and walk out. That's triumphant for you. That triumphant healing, I didn't even have to use passive. And if I didn't get triumphant healing, I probably just died under turret. Because the turret will aggro your little blobs. So once you go in little blob form, it's all over. Max Q second. Q her against her thing. Gonna E away. Still have my passive. If I didn't have my passive, I would not be doing stuff like that. It's too risky. Galio's popping off. I don't know if this is warded. Very well could be. Do still have passive though. Passive makes it all possible. Yep. Couldn't quite get me because of the healing, baby. Let's go. Passive healing on Zach is spicy. Playing Zach's actually a lot like playing Alistar, but in a lot of ways it's better. Zach E has much more range than an Alistar headbutt, and Zach also has more CC than Alistar. A lot more AoE CC. Yeah, let's go for our gargoyle stone plate. We'll get our ward. He's trying to chip out that Draven there. Their Velkaz is in trouble. Zach's a pretty good counter to Velkaz because you can do enough damage to easily kill him in lane phase. On top of that, Velkaz has to stand still to R and Zach can punish that with his E. Use my sweeper. 
Oh, the Draven break that so I can check more bushes. So Jelani must be on her golems. Yeah, she's on them. I missed my E, unfortunately. I'm gonna R her towards Draven. Oh, I have to pull off here. Oh man, Draven got stunned barely, not under turret. I was lucky. I'm gonna try to get more blobs off of these guys. Cue them together. Get two blobs off that. I don't care if Draven takes it. I don't even need these. I'd actually rather him if he did take it. I had to use my E there. That little one just randomly went for the Draven. Fuck. Galliol on Draven there. Saved him. Mm, Draven's dead. Yeah, I'm just gonna let him die. Thing is, I have shut down gold. And uh, there's a good chance we're both gonna die there anyway, so I'm glad I didn't go in. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and reset for our stone plate. Oh, we can't quite buy it yet. We need to get some more gold. Mm, I'll just sell a pink ward. We've got dragon coming up here in a bit. I'm actually gonna have to leave base. I can't afford it even with selling the pink. I don't have enough gold. I'm still short like 50. Just buy another pink then double down. Having night ulti this game. What we want to look for at this point. This is kind of when there's no more outer turrets for the most part. This is considered the mid game or at the very least the mid late game. The late part of the mid game all we need to do is just not get picked if the enemy team engages on us we auto win because of my cc or if they're out of position we auto win the only way we lose this is if i'm the one who's out of position I'm gonna knock her against her clone pulled her off the drave in there giving him a free shooting range and get my pink ward in here velkos killed hecker last time so i want to make sure this isn't warded Knock him up. I'm gonna ult him. Ignite. He's dead. Very good. Make sure you max your W last. You go E, Q, W, max E, then Q. Your W is pretty useless on Zach's support. It's just a little extra damage and an extra bloblet. Oh, they hit me. Hecarim's going a little too ham. He's not even that fed. Hecarim has less kills than them. Surprised you went for that. It's hard for me to dive that. Guess Nico's R should be on cooldown. I oh, know it's his. Her R's literally off of cooldown. Our aftershock kept us alive. Draven a little too deep. I semi baited Draven there. Uh, definitely semi bait. He kind of just stayed of his own free will there at the end. He just stayed and fought them. Can't really do anything there. It's not worded. She's not gonna come for me. Starting to step up. Mm, okay, she went the other way. I thought maybe I could hold her still for Galia. Eat some fruit. Very nice. It's not gonna be easy to kill them. Renekton doesn't really have any gold. I haven't seen Renekton this whole game. <laughs> he only has 100 CS too. I don't know what he's been doing. He's just been chilling. Chilling and grilling. We'll just peel for the Draven. We'll try not to go too deep. If we go too deep, he'll overstay and die. So we gotta be a little bit more patient. Good all from the Gallio. Pick on the Sejuani. They're about to get heavy collapsed on. Yep. Things are about to get messy for them. Ooh, wow, Galio's actually doing some work. Missed my Q. I couldn't quite land my E in that situation. Draven almost got the kill. Wow, Zed actually went back to his shadow. That was so weird. Hecarim laid his Herald. I'm going to E in between the turrets. Hey, I didn't get shot. That's pretty lucky. Once again, Zach, when you're just walking around, you don't really want the enemies to know where you are. Just 
trying to break all the vision. You're basically a fiddle stick. You're trying to set up fiddle R's. Gonna cure against the minion. I'm gonna alter. Try to alter away from her turret. There we go. Pick up the blobs and we're back to high health. Can wait in the bush. Bushes and walls are your best friend on Zach. That's how you land your E. If they see you doing it, it's really easy for them to dodge. Vane's challenge. She doesn't want it. I'm gonna knock him against the plant. Ooh, I actually knocked Galio over. That wasn't good. <laughs> Zoe was slightly angled where Galio wasn't, so they plopped to different sides. I'm gonna Q Vane. Fun fact, your Q gives true vision. If you Q Akali or Shaco or Vane, they can't go invisible. If they do, you can still see them. Most people don't realize that. If you land your Q on them, then they're kind of just screwed. <laughs> Wow, our Nectin's getting low. We don't even have our jungle over here. How are we going to smite this? We're really lucky no one came. That was really risky. We get down some wards. And now we can finally get our Gargoyle Stone Play. We'll be super, super tanky. We'll go Gargoyle Stone Play in a Bramble Vest. The reason why I went Bramble is they have a lot of healing with the Vein. To where I don't want her to heal when she hits me. I want her to at least, uh, yeah, I just want her to at least just stay neutral. And then I can get Spirit Vistage after I use up my pink wards here. I made that, but I don't break. We should play around the dragons and get my pink in the, I already have my pink in the bush. Uh, that's not my pink, that's someone else's. Gonna break their wards since we have pressure. Don't just randomly invade their jungle when your teammates aren't nearby. Make sure when you go to break wards in dangerous areas that it makes sense. Supports Kamikaze all the time for that. Knock up, pushing towards Draven, block off her. Oh, she flashed past me. I didn't even use my stone play. I didn't think I needed to. I guess I didn't die, so I guess I didn't need to. Knock up the vein. Stone plate, so I don't blow waste my passive. And there we go. Pilled it out, guys. Zack Jungle is definitely a lot of fun. For you support mains who are playing a lot of passive supports and you're getting frustrated in your games, playing shit like Janna and Soraka, you can carry with those. You can get the diamond with those if you want to. But if you want to take more of a proactive approach and have a little bit more say in your games and have one of the highest KPs or the highest on your team, then playing stuff like Zac will get you there. Obviously, don't first time Zac in ranked. Try to learn it first as support before you start running it in rank. And think about the power spikes, guys. Level 4 power spike is huge. Having two points in your E lets you roam. Having Mobies lets you roam. And... Uh, just making sure you have good vision control with your sweeper and and uh, roaming when it makes sense. If you can't get a kill, don't roam. If you look mid and your laner, your mid laner's backing, then obviously you don't roam to that. Unless you think you can solo the enemy laner if they're like a 20 health or something and they're still pushing. Now we're going to go ahead and go for Spirit Vistage. We only wanted the Bramble Vest. I don't want to get a full Thornmel. They have triple AP champs with the Velkaz, Vayne, and Nico. To where I'd get more value out of Spirit Vistage and Thornmill once again. Just went Bramble Vest for the Grievous Moons it gives. That way Bane can't really heal off of me. That's not what I, I don't want that happening. Should really be pushing bot lanes. They're only inhibitor that's currently still up. Let's get our wards down. We have some pressure made. We could also see several of them on the map when I went for these wards. Get that one down a little more aggro. I like two neutrals, one aggro. I can't if you cancel your E, if you just don't use it after you press it, then it goes on half cooldown. I, I don't want to engage. The enemies aren't committed. If they're not going to commit, and if you can't reach them, then there's no point to do it. They'll just be giving away your position. Oh, Draven's going in. Probably killed Velkaz and two auto attacks. Cancel my E. 
I can't reach is the thing. I can't even reach how deep they are. Draven healed a lot off those minions. Wow. I think we're just going to end. The enemies aren't really trying to stop us. We could just end it down mid. QZ. R. I got snared. I wanted to flash R and knock him towards my teammates, but I couldn't move on that one. And uh, that's how you play Zach support. If you guys are auto filled or you just want to play a more proactive support, you should definitely try out Zach. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.